Okay, let's practice the correct way to find a least common denominator. So suppose my denominators were 54 and 75. I know and you know you cannot figure that out in your head. You do not know the times tables for 54. You do not know the times tables for 75. Therefore, the correct method to find a least common denominator is to do a factor tree. Break your denominators into prime numbers. So here we go. Start me off with any factors of 54. I can think off the top of my head, it's 9 times 6. 9 and 6 are not prime. 9 is 3 times 3. These are prime numbers, I circle them. I'm done with that part of the tree. 6 is 2 times 3. So now I have 54 factored into the product of prime numbers. Let's do the same thing for 75. That is not prime. The first thing I think of is 3 quarters with 75. So this would be 3 times 25. 3 is prime. 25 is not. It's 5 times 5. Now here's the problem. People think once you do the factor trees, if you just take all these prime numbers and multiply them, you get the least common denominator. That is incorrect because you don't want to repeat factors. So to find the least common denominator, once you're done factoring, you then compare the trees. You look at each tree and you take the most of every prime number. So, let's start. This tree has one two. This tree has no twos. I need the most, so I need that one two. This tree has three threes. This tree has one three. So we need the most. We need all three threes. This tree has no fives. This tree has two fives. I need the most, the two fives. So everybody look closely. You're not just looking at the two factor trees and finding the numbers they have in common. You're taking every different prime number and using it. Now, if we multiply these prime numbers together, we'll have our least common denominator. We don't have to multiply in this order, so I'm going to use the community property. Off the top of my head, I know 5 times 5 is 25, and 25 times 2 is 50. So I know that's a 50. I know 3 times 3 is 9. So now I have 50 times 9, which I can still do in my head. I know 5 times 9 is 45, so 50 times 9 is 450. And then i got to multiply 450 by this last 3. So I'll put my placeholder 0 at the end. I know 3 times 5 is 15. I'll put down my 5. I'll carry my 1. 3 times 4 is 12, and 1 is 13. So your least common denominator of 54 and 75 is 1,350. Now, what's great about this method is if it works in arithmetic, it does the same job in algebra. If you're trying to find a least common denominator and you have an algebra expression, all you have to do is factor it into primes. So here we go. I have the monomial 15x squared y. Let's break it down. 15 is not prime. It would be 3 times 5. x squared is not prime because x squared would be x times x. Now, the variable y is prime. It's y to the first. That's lowest terms. So there are your prime factors for 15x squared y. Let's do the same thing for 60y cubed. Off the top of my head for 60, I'm thinking 6 times 10. 6 times 10. Neither one of those numbers are prime, so I keep going. 6 is 2 times 3. That's prime. 10 is 2 times 5. That's prime. y cubed is not prime. y cubed is y times y times y. So now I have that denominator in primes. Now let's get the LCD. To get the LCD, you take the most of every prime number or every prime term. So let's start with the numbers. No twos. I see here two twos. So I have to take both twos. All right? Let's look next number, three. One three, one three. Well, they have the same amount, so you need one three. 
And it doesn't matter which th tree you're stealing it from. We have some numbers, five. One, five, one, five. They have the same amount, so we just need one, five. And again, it doesn't matter which tree you get it from. Variables. X squared. I have two X's here. I have no X's here. Well, I have to take the two X's. That's the most. Y's. One Y, three Y's. Well, obviously, three is the most. All right, let's multiply it together for the LCD. Two times two is four. Four times three is 12. 12 times three is 60. I mean, 12 times five is 60. Then I'll multiply my variables. X times X is X squared. Y times Y times Y is Y cubed. And that is your least common denominator. 60 X squared Y cubed. Now I know what you're thinking. You're saying, but Miss Black, I could have looked at that and figured that out. And that's fine. Just like if I gave you the denominator 3 and 7, would you have to do any work for the LCD? No, 3 and 7 are prime, and you know the LCD is 21. Just like 6 and 8, if you know the LCD is 6 and 8 is 24 off the top of your head, that's great. If you look here, I want you to notice something, though. When we look to find the least common denominator, the word least is deceiving. Least doesn't mean you're taking the smaller amount of the variables. Least means you're taking the most. So if you look, when we did the least common denominator and we had a y and a y cubed, we took the bigger amount, y cubed. So just pay attention to that. If you're going to do it in your head, then when you find the least common denominator of variables, you're really taking the variable with the bigger exponent. All right, we're going to work more on this in the next video.